and turn in your King James Bible to the book of John, chapter 11. I'm going to tell you today, I'm not going to teach you, I'm going to tell you how to go to heaven without dying. One of the big questions is, what happens to me when I die? And that's a very important question, one of the most important questions that you can answer in this life. But I'm going to give you a, another option. How about the option of not dying and going to heaven without ever dying? Let me show you what the scriptures have to say about this. John chapter 11, verse 21. Here you have the story of Jesus, and he comes to his friend Lazarus, and his friend Lazarus has died. And Lazarus is buried, and Jesus raises him from the dead. But he's talking to Lazarus' uh, relatives here. Let's see what he says here. John chapter 11, verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. You see, the difference between with Christianity and all the false cults out there, we have a promise of a resurrection. We have a promise that we will one day live after we have died. But look, it gets even more interesting here. Verse 24, Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus saith un, or said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That will be the dead saints. But look at this, verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Let me ask you, do you believe what Jesus Christ said right there in the word of God, God's holy, perfect word, the King James Bible? Do you believe what he said? If you live and believe in me, you'll never die. You say, well, we understand that in the sense of that we will go to heaven and so technically you don't really die. Your soul and your spirit lives on. Your body might die, but it's technically then it will come back to life later on at the resurrection. That's not what Jesus is speaking about here. And I'm going to show you that Jesus is here giving a, a little bit of a sight into what's coming for the body of Christ. Let me show you. Ephesians chapter 1. Go to the book of Ephesians, turn back towards the old, or to, to the uh, book of Revelation, back towards the back part of the Bible, and you'll come to the book of Ephesians, Galatians, and then Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, and we'll start in verse 10. The Bible says that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. I'm on earth right now. I'm standing here on the earth. But the Lord's going to gather together those which are in heaven, those who have died, in other words, and those which are on earth. Hmm. Verse 11, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the ho that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, under the praise of his glory. Did you know that uh, when God saves you, I said when God saves you, not you save yourself by your good works or by your beliefs or whatever else. When God saves you because you follow the scriptures, the Bible way to be saved. When God saves you, he's redeemed you. He's purchased you. Hmm. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the lamb. The old hymn says, you are purchased, bought with a price. So God looks down at this earth and he, there's a little sold symbol on each of us that are saved. We've been sold to Jesus Christ. And the day is going to come when he's going to say, okay, there's some that died in me, died in the Lord. Their soul and their spirit, they're here. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. The dead saints they're not sleeping in the earth someplace, soul sleep or whatever else. Their bodies are down there, but their soul and their spirit are with the Lord. So those that are in heaven, God says, okay, I'm going to give you your body. That 
incorruptible, immortal body. I'm going to give it to you. But those of us that are on the earth, I have a little sold sticker on me and the Lord's going to say, okay, I'm going to redeem my, my purchased possession. Redeem him from off the earth. And I'm going to go to heaven without dying. You know why? Because Jesus Christ said so. He that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Back towards the front part of your Bible if you're newly saved or whatever. And by the way, the reason I say turn in your King James Bible is because this is the greatest book that's ever been written. This is God's word in English. The other ones are counterfeits. This one here comes from the vast majority of extant Greek manuscripts. Over 99% of extant, in other words, those that are found in museums, whatever, they underlie the text that underlies this King James Bible. The new versions that came out, they're, they're newer, better scholarship. It's a complete lie. You can demonstrate that to be a lie. They had the same readings in 1582 in the Jesuit Dewey Reims Bible that are in these new versions. And the supposed newer readings and things, they're not, you know, better updated, whatever readings. That's not true. Um, all the new versions are Satan's attempts to replace this blessed book right here. That's what they are. And anybody that uses one of those new versions and hates the King James Bible, they're lost. Guarantee it. 1 Corinthians 15, and I want you to read along. That's the other thing. I want you to read along in a paper, excuse me, paper King James Bible. Very important. That way you know that I'm telling you the truth. You can go online and find it at first. If this is the first time you're hearing about this, fine. But you need to go and you need to find a paper King James Bible. They're all over the place. It's the most printed book in history. The authorized version, King James Version, it's, that's the nickname for it. But it was originally called the authorized version. Most printed book in the history of the world. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 through 55. And this book has changed more lives, too, than any other book in history. Behold, I show you a mystery. Paul, the Apostle Paul, is having the mystery finally revealed to him. Jesus Christ talked about it, and it's written about in other places in Scripture, but it's finally being revealed to the Apostle Paul. This has nothing to do with the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is a, a catching up of the bride of Christ before the Lord pours out his wrath and judgment on this earth. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? You know, there's some place out there where there's the ground right now and it wants, to, it wants to get me. And it looks at me and the, speaking symbolically here, of course, the ground doesn't actually look at me, but I'm saying this earth looks and says he's a living being. He's a mortal man. And they look and they see my hands getting older. And they see the gray hair in my beard and they see the, the gray hair up here on my head and, and in my mustache and and it sees me getting older and I don't move as quick as I used to move. And the, and the, and the grave says, I'm going to get you. But all of a sudden, come up hither and I'm gone. And the grave says, he got away. <laughs> it's going to be a wonderful thing. Am I going to make it to the catching up of the body of Christ? I have no idea. The devil's people could kill me first. Well, the dead shall be raised, you know, first. <laughs> The dead in Christ will go up first, so then I get to beat all those of you that are living. But uh, it's going to be a wonderful thing. But the whole thing is that there's a promise there for people to not die. And it'd be neat to be up there first with the Lord and everything, absent from the body, present with the Lord. It's a great promise. By no means is it diminished or anything else. But to be living and to never have to experience death, Never have to die in a car accident. Never have to die of a heart attack or some kind of a sickness or you get shot or you get stabbed or, or anything else. There's a lot of painful ways to die. But there's a promise there for someone in the future that they're going to be able to go to be with the Lord 
and never have to experience death. Hmm. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Turn back towards the back part of the Bible again. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Beginning in verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. I have hope that I'm going to see some of my saved relatives. I have hope that, I'm, that I'll see them again because I understand that they were saved. It's a good hope to have. I'm not like other heathen pagan people out there that say, oh, my relative's dead and I just have the memories and that's all I have. I never see them again. That's a terrible thing. Verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. I hope that I am one of the ones that's alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Be a wonderful thing. Verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So there you have it. The Bible does teach that there will be people that will be alive and they will never have to experience death. Never. Elijah had it happen in the Old Testament. Enoch had it happen in the Old Testament. Never died. Hmm. Very interesting. Chapter 5, let's continue on here. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. We don't have to know a date. Somebody starts saying, I think it's going to be September this year, 23rd of September 2024, because it lines up with the blood moons or something. You're dealing with a false prophet. You're dealing with a liar, with a deceiver. Don't let anybody ever tell you that there's a specific date when it's going to happen. Now, I don't believe that it could have happened at any time during the church age. That's nonsense because the Bible has a day, a year, a month, a day, and an hour for events in the book of Revelation. God has that planned out. And the catching up of the body of Christ is going to be at a certain planned out time as well. But there's no time given. There's no any kind of sign or anything else that happens there. So to say it could have happened in Paul's day, it could have happened in you know, 1000 AD or 1200 AD, that's nonsense. I don't believe in that. But I do believe that now it could happen pretty much at any time. I think we're getting very close to that. You can make the arguments. You can say, well, you know, maybe the mark of the beast technology is not quite ready. Maybe the temple's not built yet. Maybe this, maybe that. Yeah, those are good arguments. I've made those arguments. I don't know. But the Lord could work out some other details. The Lord could say, okay, I'm going to make these things happen. I don't know. How much time is it between the time when the body of Christ goes up and the Antichrist is unleashed and goes out and he makes the covenant? How much time is there? There could be years in there. We have no idea. We have no way of knowing that. So, hey, you know, if the Lord wants to make it happen today, I'm anxious and ready for it to happen. Can't wait for it to happen. I'd like to have it happen before the sermon's done. Somebody can find this camera or whatever else and say, oh, I found a weird camera. The guy was there and then he disappeared. He's talking about this catching up of the body of Christ and boom, he's gone. That'd be wonderful. But look at the condition of the lost world in this time period. For when they shall say, notice the distinction between ye, you, yourselves in verses 1 and 2 and they, them, they in verse 3 and continuing on down. Talking about the lost world. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as to prevail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. We escape. The body of Christ escapes. We leave without dying. Those of us that are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord, we go up without dying, but they don't escape. <coughs> but ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Do you, do you get to watching things? You know, 
amazing here we have YouTube. You can watch me and you can watch a lot of the other stuff that's going on and you think, men shall be lovers of their own selves. There it is. Ungrateful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. There it is. Fierce, traitors, heady, high-minded. There, there, there. What are we doing? We're watching and we're being sober. And you just think, it can't be much longer. <laughs> you know, what about the others? They Oh, it's great. The times have never been better. Boy, the, the economy is great. It's the best economy in American history. And the things are great. I mean, the unemployment's way down. We just have great things going in the future. We're going to be traveling in spaceships. We're going to be flying all around in electric cars. And we have this amazing future. And we're just saying, no, we don't. No, we don't. I mean, they don't. But this earth, it's not a good future coming. It's a terrible future. And we can see that. But it's going to be good for those of us who are alive and remain. It's going to be really good for us. <clears throat> Verse 7, For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. It amazes me how much these uh, lost people have to drink. Hmm. Saw uh, Alex Jones, you know, he was on uh, Tucker Carlson a few months or two ago, whatever it was. And he gets on there and he's you know, talking about his alcohol, special type of alcohol that just stuff's really good and drunken, drunken in the night. He's not, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't have any hope for the future. Oh, he's a professing Christian. Yeah, right. So is this tree here. This tree's about, actually, I think this tree's probably more saved than Alex Jones could be. But um, wicked man that he is. Verse 8, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet the hope of salvation. Hmm. Guard your mind. So you get into these uh, conspiracy theories. You're a tinfoil hat wearer. Well, I don't wear tinfoil for my hat. I wear the helmet of salvation. That's what I wear on my head. I don't need to have all your wicked propaganda and everything else coming into my mind. No, thank you. I abstain from all parents of evil. Don't want it. <clears throat> for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the purpose for the time of Jacob's trouble coming? What is the purpose for the book of Revelation? It's God's wrath that's being poured out on people that have rejected Jesus Christ. And the two big groups there, the Jewish people and the Roman Catholic people. We call them Papal Juden. They're not really, you can't really completely call them Jews. They just have given themselves over. They've mingled themselves and everything else. Those people, that's what it's all about. It's not about the body of Christ. Oh, the church has to be purified or something. That is the dumbest thing. And I will repeat that and repeat it until it gets through some people's thick skulls. It's nonsense to say that the body of Christ has to be purified or something like this. Just idiocy. So the body of Christ has to go through God's wrath? <laughs> and the rest of the lost world doesn't have to go? It's not about the lost world being punished? It's not about they that sleep in the night? And they that are drunken? No, no, it's the body of Christ that has to go through it. We have to be purified and whipped and beaten and things by God. You have a weird God there. I'm sorry. God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake, I'm awake, or sleep, down there in the ground, your body's sleeping, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Brother Brian, uh, could you please pray for me? I'm, I'm in a wheelchair. I can't get around anymore. Made some dumb decisions in life or some things happen and I'm in a wheelchair. Brother Brian, could you pray for me? I, I was just diagnosed with cancer. Brother Brian, could you please pray for me because I'm just in real bad health and I've got headaches all the time and, I, and everything. Brethren, I pray for you as much as I can. Lord knows I do. If I had the, the miraculous gift of healing, I'd be coming around. I'd just travel around and be healing people all I could. But that sign gift is there for the Jews, and I don't have many Jews around me that I would need to show, confirm the word with signs following, like what happened early on in the book of Acts, before transitions away from that. When the nation of Israel rejected the Lord, the Lord said, okay, I'm going to pull back some of those signs. I think that they'll come back in the end times, uh, as in you know, time of Jacob's trouble with Moses and Elijah when they come back as the two witnesses. Again, I've 
proved all these things in many studies, so don't say, well, prove it in your comment section. I'm not proving it in the comment section. Watch my videos. You'll go th I'll go through the scriptures. I'll prove it. But the whole point is, brethren, you and I have precious promises. We have the promise that this corruptible shall put on incorruption. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Talk about a fast cure for headaches. You're there and you're just, oh, and everywhere you turn, you're, you're just moving your eyes hurts. I've had migraines so many times throughout my life. Praise the Lord, I've gotten my health in check now so I don't get headaches very often. I used to get them very bad. Watch my earlier videos when we first moved to Maine. It was just headaches all the time and barely even cognizant. <laughs> uh, terrible uh, headaches I used to get. But if you're out there, you have a headache. You're out there, you have a backache. You have pain and uh, sore and everything else. And all of a sudden you hear your name come up hither. In a moment... In the twinkling of an eye, blinking your eye, boom. Quicker than I can snap my thumb, like that, all your pain's gone. Up there in heaven, looking around, there's all the saints that have died, there's the living saints, and there's Jesus Christ. That quick. All your problems are over. But only if you're saved. Only if you're truly born again. Well, I watched a video and it told me that I don't need to pray a prayer. I can just believe in, in my mind and, and believe it. And I can claim the promises and whatever else. I can just go around saying, I'm saved because I believed. Uh, that's not what the Bible teaches. Okay, uh, you need to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. You need to ask God to save you. There needs to be some proof there that you got saved. Um, well, you know, I don't know. I've never understood why people just are just so flippant with the salvation. Oh, I think I'm saved. I, I'm good. I'm good. I used to go door to door. You know, you get that. Uh, if you die today, would you go to heaven? I think I would. I'm a, I'm a pretty good person. I, 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 I'm good. Well, you know, if you mess up, you're going to the other place down there, hell, where you get to burn forever until, well, until the great way through in judgment. Then you go to the lake of fire. Then you burn forever. Um, or you, you might want to actually make sure of this. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I think a little bit crazy. Revelation chapter 4. There's not one verse of Scripture that proves a pre-trib rapture. Not one. Not one verse that says it. Well, the term pre-trib rapture, I would agree with that. But as far as the thing of being caught up to heaven before the Antichrist is unleashed, well... Right here's a proof. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardin stone, and there was a ra rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. <clears throat> so it's not just John. You say, well, John, was he was caught up, in, his spirit was caught up, and his body was down on you know, the island of Patmos, you know, like this, uh, out-of-body experience or something, transcendental meditation. No, and the spirit means that he was just simply there, and he's understanding things spiritually. Okay, he's physically there, and the 24 elders are physically there. How do you know? Because Revelation chapter 6, he sees souls under the altar, and he calls them souls. He doesn't say the 24 elders are souls. And the 24 elders are there, and they're crowned. They've gone through the judgment seat of Christ. So there's a time interval there that we don't quite understand, but that's because it's the book of Revelation. Those things will be revealed later on by Jesus Christ. The revelation of Jesus Christ is the full name of the book. There's a book that's sealed in heaven that no man is worthy to open the seals except for Jesus Christ. The lamb that had been slain. Now he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. You can go to heaven without dying. I just showed you what the Bible says. You say, well, I don't believe in the Bible. Okay, then don't go to heaven without dying. Just that simple. Well, you know, I, I think that it all happened in the first century. Okay, then you're not going to go to heaven without dying. 
Well, I believe that uh, <clears throat> we're going to go through the Great Tribulation, and we're going to go through it, and, and a lot of us won't make it. Uh, that's a problem because the Bible says that we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. But if you take the mark of the beast, then I guess you get unsealed somehow. You're kind of a Ziploc Christian, you know, you're sealed and then unsealed. And uh, one minute you're in heaven, then you know, sealed by the Holy Spirit, and the next you're unsealed and, and you get dumped out into, you know, onto the earth and you go to hell when you die or something because you took the mark of the beast because you had to um, to provide for your own. And so you had to take the mark to be able to buy or sell. And you get into this huge big problem if you believe that Christians go through that time of Jacob's trouble, which is not even for the body of Christ. So <laughs> um, spend some time studying the word from a man that actually believes the book. All right. I'm not some little dork that was on YouTube and it just is, you know, I, I'm a YouTube wonder, webcam wonder or something like this. That's not me. I've preached in churches. I've been around. I've talked to people in person. I still talk to people in person. I don't film everything that I do. All right. <laughs> I've been confronted by people. I have had arguments and things with people in stores and, and other places. They come to my door and whatever. I've been through a lot of things. Like I said, I don't record everything. So, you know, but hey, you, you want to believe I'm a jerk and some stupid guy and whatever else you don't need to listen to me? Then don't listen to me. Go out and listen to the preachers out there that are just lying to you, trying to get your 10% tithe so that they can make the mortgage payment that month on their church building. That's the way it is. I don't monetize my videos. I never have. It's nice if people like the video and comment on the video so that it doesn't get completely buried here on YouTube. They love to shadow ban pretty much everything I do. And by the way, YouTube people, I'd like to see you go up as well. All right? But you need to repent. You need to come to God as a sinner. You know, the old hymn, My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to his cross, and I bear it no more. It is well with my soul. Written by a man that lost all of his children and almost lost his wife. All went down. His son died of scarlet fever, I think it was, and his little three little daughters uh, drowned when the ship went down. Late 1800s. Horatio Spafford, I think, is what his name was. Amazing testimonies of brethren down through the centuries, and they've died, and they're with the Lord right now. And someday I'm going to get to meet them. All my heroes in the faith. It's going to be amazing. But if you're not interested in that, if you want to go with the, the modern world and everything, the way this world's going, and you want to be self-deceived and get drunk a little bit because you can't handle reality, that's why you get drunk. Let's go out and have a good time. I want to forget my cares and my worries and my sorrows. You better stock up on alcohol, partner, because you're going to need it in the future. It's going to be bad for you. I'm telling you how you can go to heaven without dying. I'm not saying go to heaven because you've tithed enough. Go to heaven because you've come and you've joined my cult and helped me pay for the building that I have and whatever. I don't have a building that, you know, needs to be paid off. Everything I have is debt free. Not because I make huge amounts of money either, by the way. So that is going to be it for this study. Um, again, brethren, what a joyous thing to think about that there are going to be those of us. We might not all make it. Some of us might die, but then we'll beat the others up, you know, going up first. But there will be some of us that are going to get to the place where the Lord says, come up hither. And we're going to get to go to heaven without ever dying. Without ever having your loved ones around and they're weeping and they're crying and the, and the sorrow and everything. And you're like that. It's going to be amazing. One day here, oh Lord, it's not looking so good. I bet it was pretty bad for John on the Isle of Patmos. He's out there. They probably threw him out of the ship. He gets up. Oh, my back. Oh, boy. Oh, different times I've been going through all the stuff I went through for the Lord in prison and probably beaten a number of times, you know, like the Apostle Paul. And Oh, Lord. I'm on this island all by myself. Uh, can I have something to eat, please, Lord? Is there anything out here for me to eat? Maybe I should look under these rocks or something. And the Lord says, 
Hey, John, look up. I see a door up there. Pretty amazing. Would to God that it could be today. Wouldn't it be amazing if it was?